Does the name Fleetwood Mac mean anything to you? What about Mazzy Star? If you answered yes to any of these questions, well, do I have an aesthetic for you? Now, you don't have to have two hip ants and a sarcastic black cat in order to enjoy this aesthetic, but I think that we can all agree that that would be a bonus. And if you haven't figured out now by the title, we are going to be discussing the whimsy goth aesthetic. And in order to do a thorough deep dive on this aesthetic, we're gonna take a look at the two words, whimsy and goth. In fact, you might recognize me from TikTok. I do a bunch of aesthetic deep dive videos on there. But if you don't recognize me, hi, I'm Alexis. I make fashion related content, vlogs, and other fun videos like this. Now, before I jump in and put my scientist coat on and dissect this aesthetic, let's take a look at the history of whimsy goth. Now, whimsy goth is coined by Evan Collins and is built on the moodiness of gothic style, dark colors, rich textures, and plenty of drama. And although the whimsy goth aesthetic has just been titled recently and has been gaining more traction and becoming more and more popular, a lot of the elements of this aesthetic have been around for a very long time. And we're going to be taking it back all the way to the Renaissance era. Their clothing has influenced our fashion for many decades, not just with this aesthetic, but you can see a lot of similarities between the Renaissance style and the whimsy goth aesthetic. For instance, for the Renaissance era, it brings you flowy dresses with long ornate sleeves, corsets, velvet textures, and popular colors during this time were purples and deep reds, and you also saw a lot of lace finishes. Now, other points in history that you can see in the Whimsigoth style would also be the Victorian style, which featured popular colors such as maroon, burgundy, dark green, again, velvet, corsets, and lace, and as we progress more and more to present day, you also see a little bit of 70s in it. You see platform boots, some flares, caftan dresses, corduroy, and although the whimsy goth aesthetic is very texture oriented and you see a lot of velvet, corduroy is one texture that you do see here and then again. Did that make sense? Every now and then. And the texture corduroy did reach its peak in the 70s. And other colors that were popular during this time period would be burnt orange and dark brown and most recently, the 90s. So again, for the 90s, you see similar textures, so velvet and lace, darker colors, more so a winter color palette, lots of berries, and more of a gothic style. So the whimsy goth aesthetic takes inspiration from all of those different eras in history. And you can see that in the clothing, in the color palette, in the textures of the clothing. I mentioned like corduroy in the 70s, you know, there was also a lot of long flowy dresses and like gauzier materials. And you do see that with whimsy goth aesthetic dresses, they're very long and flowy and free. But now that we understand the history and the inspiration that it takes from, let's dissect each word, starting with whimsy. There's a lot of celestial elements to this aesthetic. And I have gotten asked before, do you have to be into astrology to like this aesthetic? And the simple answer is no. And I know I do a ton of aesthetic deep dives and I talk so much about aesthetics, but truly how you find your own style is just by taking bits and pieces of different aesthetics you like and making it into one. So if you just wanted to take some elements of the whimsy goth aesthetic and leave the astrology out of it, that's perfectly fine. Now this aesthetic, the color palette is mostly winter and berry as I've previously discussed. However, you do see some gold and possibly burnt oranges and these colors do reflect kind of the sun, the stars, and the, I was gonna say the moon. The moon isn't necessarily yellow. Is it? I don't know. I don't have time to Google it. Now you see a lot of sun, moon, and stars symbols in this aesthetic, whether that's in the earrings, necklaces, chain belts. But now for the second word, goth. Now, once again, let's take it back to the 90s. In the 90s, you would see a lot of gothic outfits. You would see darker color palettes, darker eye looks. You would see lots of lace and velvet, blacks, deep purples, maroons. You would see thick velvet chokers. And you would see icons such as Winona Ryder wearing outfits like these. Sometimes Stevie Nicks, I mean, she does wear a lot of clothing that fits this aesthetic. And a lot of people do credit her as a main inspiration for the whimsy goth aesthetic even though, like I said, this aesthetic, the elements to it go way back. You would also see this look in 90s shows, such as Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which I made a reference to earlier in this video. You would also see it in shows like The Craft. In these pictures of the shows, you can see examples of everything that I've talked about so far, whether it be textures, color palettes, or eye makeup looks. Now the word goth can also be included just because this is an alternative style. To its core, Alternative means anything that would make your grandparents question your life choices. 
anything that kind of leans away from the traditional style. So the whimsy goth aesthetic is an alternative look because it's steering away from more of a clean cut outfit, hair, and makeup look. Now let's get into textures. The Whimsy Goth aesthetic is very texture oriented. I've mentioned lace, I've mentioned velvet. When you look up Victorian Gothic clothing, you do see some similarities to the Whimsy Goth aesthetic, just without those pops of color of like bright gold or burnt orange. Because the Whimsy Goth aesthetic, again, has those whimsical elements to it that makes it kind of a mixture of like light and edgy fashion. And when you combine those together, it creates a very unique style. Now let's discuss the color palette. What makes the Whimsy Goth aesthetic so unique, other than the mixtures of styles, is the color palette. You have a winter or fall color palette. You have lots of berry colors. You have some blacks, some browns. You have purples, maroons, burgundies, forest greens. And these colors, by the way, look fantastic in velvet. So when you take a look at Whimsy Goth aesthetic clothing, you have an ode to the Renaissance. You have some flowy blouses, some flowy dresses. You have corsets, except hopefully they're not as painful this time around. You have velvet midi skirts and lace tops. You have a darker makeup look, but then you also have some more celestial elements to it. Some pops of gold, gold earrings, a gold belt. And the combination of those things and like a darker color palette with more gauzy, flowy clothing makes this aesthetic not as dark and heavy. So in conclusion, the Whimsy Goth aesthetic is a combination of whimsical and gothic styles. It's very texture oriented. It has more of a berry color palette or winter and fall color palette, but you still see some bright golds or burnt oranges that kind of represent the stars, the sun. It is an alternative style. And then again, although the Whimsy Goth aesthetic was just recently titled and named and has increased in popularity over these past few years, especially on platforms such as TikTok, the aesthetic as a whole has taken inspiration from a lot of different periods throughout history. Be sure to let me know what your thoughts are and what aesthetic deep dive I should do next.